Hello, and welcome to our review for the Zygon Inversion, which is the latest episode of Doctor Who, which follows on from last week's The Zygon Invasion. So do us all like speaking backwards and shit. Um, if yeah, I, can, do, do, wish, yeah, I think I'll you can do it in the audacity. Um, I can't do that. <laughs> invert the audio. That would make no sense. Like. I think there's a different one for inverting it just makes the highs low. Let's just... real dusty up. <laughs> um, anyway. Oh God, um... We're starting off with my thoughts this week. Uh... Is it invert? <clears throat> yeah. Ooh, reverse. And there, is... there we go. I knew there was a reverse one on it. Um, now, last week I pretty much gushed about how much I loved last week's episode. I really enjoyed it. And this week actually did not let me down. I really liked all of it. I thought it was a brilliant continuation of the same line. It didn't pull an ending out of nowhere in the last, like, two minutes, which I really liked for this week, actually. Uh, it was a really nice conclusion to the whole thing, and it was a really... Capaldi's speech was so really... the internet people need to listen to that when they argue on the internet. Yeah, I think... That Jerry... entire speech, every single quote-unquote that... person on the internet who argues about whatever... Next issue is popular on the internet. Needs to listen to that speech. That speech every, is incredible. Every world leader needs to listen to that speech. Um, mom, I'll quickly put Mum's thoughts since you just mentioned that. Can I just say something first? Yeah. If you hear an explosion in the background, it's either fireworks or I'm under attack by the Sith Empire. So my windows open. I, I thought you would be under attack from the Republic. Yeah, the Sith always telling each other. Yeah, just my windows open and there are fireworks. If you hear it, it's still is. Fair enough. We, we are recording it about a couple days after Boxing Day, so. Yeah. Uh, Boxing Day? Bonfire Boxing night. Day. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, I did miss Christmas. Uh, uh, booking flights at Christmas is on the brown. Um, mum thoughts quickly, just because you mentioned World Leader. My mum actually said she thinks every World Leader should watch that, should watch this episode. Mm. And I completely agree. That is a really brilliant, powerful message. And I was on the verge of sort of welling up a little bit with that speech because it was brilliantly delivered, just brilliant. I cannot fault that speech because it was just brilliantly executed. The writing was superb. The performance from Peter was just excellent. Real, top marks. And Stephen Moffat actually wrote this one as well with La, with Peter Harness, who, who wrote all of last week's. Generally, I've liked this two-parter entirely. We confirmed my theory that Kate wasn't a Zygon. Duh. Yeah, well, we, we all say, Duh. Um, I really liked a lot of it. Uh, I, I don't have any problems with it. This is it's it's fixed my as it was from last week. It's buoyed my opinions of it again. Your, your crisis of faith you had a couple of weeks ago. My crisis of faith I had with the Maisie Williams, uh, the second part of the Maisie Williams one, because the first one I thought was all right. It, it was the woman who lived. I, I gave me a bit of a crisis. Um, not a Top Gear type crisis either. This was a <laughs> <laughs> very limited audience that I'll get to. Um, no, but I think this has been one of the best ones of the series again. Generally, this two-parter, because I've not had any foibles. It's not had any foibles and problems. I haven't had any criticisms for this for this week's or last week's. I enjoyed all aspects of it, and I could happily go back and watch it again, the whole thing. The, the, the plot didn't uh, end suddenly. There was no... It, it was good. They, they didn't do that thing which uh, they did with uh, Under the Lake and Before the Flood with the whole Fisher Price King. <laughs> we are coining that phrase, my friend. Before I even came up with it. <laughs> I'm so glad. If that gets anywhere else on the internet, we're, we're claiming that. Um, I'd also be amazed that we've got our subscription is that wide. Um, it's a rise of things fasting. It's really internet. Yeah, very true. Um, no, but I, that one sort of let me down a little bit with, I think they could have done a lot more with him, but they didn't. Bonnie was a brilliant villain, actually, for this, because she really was the idea of that tantrum-y child. I could make a joke about certain type of people on the internet, but I'm not going to. Uh -huh. You can make that analogy for people generally in the, in the kind of that world leader... Anyone who gets in their knickers and twist about something... More than that, the idea... You generally don't think when you get angry at stop point. No, it's the whole irrational thing. And... You, don't, you, don't, you don't know what you want. No. That's the dog chasing the car. Yeah. You don't have to know what you do when you get it. Is that a Dark Knight reference? It's a phrase in general, I think you're saying. You're like a dog, you're like a dog chasing the car. You wouldn't know what to no, do when you catch it. 
Yeah. Um, but no, I really like. I've got no criticisms for this week's episode. I thought all of it was brilliant. Followed on, really made you look a little bit at Kate Stewart in a slightly different way because of her willingness to use violence. She was trying, trying to nuke London in the day of the Doctor. Very true, but this time you actually saw her with the actor shooting people. It's that difference of the threat and actually doing it is that different thing. It's like seeing... It's just, like I said, it's that different thing. The idea of doing it and actually doing it is two different things. It's the idea of being... You could go up and do something, but actually doing it, it takes a lot more. And it suddenly means you have to look at the character in a different way. Um, which only makes me realise she's very different from her father. Uh, Brookie did got that revolver out on frequent occasions. He did on he did on occasions. If memory serves, on one occasion it's what saved the Doctor because he had silver bullets. Mm. In uh, it was an episode with the Seventh Doctor. I think it was actually his last ever appearance before the Saturday Night Adventures. Yeah, uh, which is brilliant. But it just made me suddenly think of Kate can be quite cold when she wants to, which, which works a little bit in that way. Um, which worked for what she was serving. She was serving as literally the counterpart to Bonnie. Which worked. Just, I really liked it. What were your thoughts? Well. <laughs> frankly. Are you going to say something just to be controversial? I liked it. Oh, good. I, <laughs> I think I liked it a lot better than last week. I liked this week's more, actually. Um, Brett was there a bit more as well, actually, which was quite I nice. The idea I liked. I like cold Clara. <laughs> What's his face? Uh, Jack Coleman can actually act. Um, yeah, brilliant. Amazing. I really um, love. I have to admit, I love the Doctor Zigella. Yes. I'm thinking, that's brilliant. Mm. It was really good. It was actually nice seeing her play a villain. Yeah, it was nice seeing her. It's a welcome change, actually. It was nice seeing that difference from usual Clara. Because we've seen Clara be a bit cold at times, but actually for the whole thing, just playing, she was really good as a villain. Yeah. It was really nice. I could see her and do more stuff like that. Um, I've got nothing really to talk about that episode because I, I liked all of it. I didn't have any problems with it. I mean, we could go on about. No, there's nothing really. To my imagination of the Osgood box look look a lot like the moment. I think it's designed to. Yeah, I think the Doctor actually intentionally yeah. designed it for that look. Um, <laughs> like, like if Billy Piper shows up, I am leaving. <laughs> Um, although I, I like Billy Piper in the 50th anniversary. I like Billy Piper generally. I, I, I like Rose. <laughs> oh, I can get behind this. I like her as Rose, but I also like to play in the moment. Which is I really like her as Rose with Christopher Eccleston. I liked her full stop. I didn't have a problem with her. Um, well, I mean, I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm really playing the episode in my head, just seeing if yeah, there's something jumping out at me. Uh, there's nothing that's jumping out at me is me going. The standout moment was still Peter's speech. Oh, yeah. Was, that which was just it was brilliant. Doctor Who speech. Yeah, and it's brilliant because it was really uh, brilliantly executed. Because they found that where the he couldn't do Matt Smith type speeches. Oh no, because they're too big. Matt Smith speeches are brilliantly. He could probably do the one from the Rings of Akatan. Mm. But Peter's Doctor is more hurt. Mm. Peter's speeches can't be about hope so much. They need to come from a place of pain as their root, I think. Because he's got that angst, that not angst isn't like the word, but he's got that, that pain. Yeah. That, that dull ache which becomes inflamed, which worked so brilliantly in that last speech. Mm. And you really, ah, we can talk a little bit about that last scene with him and, the, him and Clara in the TARDIS again. Yeah? What do you want to say about his choice of words, and the very much you are getting the sense of he he's, he is getting a bit cold with her at times. Mm. He is clearly preparing himself for the. He knows something. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he knows he's gonna. He knows he's gonna lose Clara. Mm. And they've been saying Moffat and Peter and everything were saying this week about how when Mar- Clara goes, she's gone. She's not coming back. Mm. Which I'm sure you're jumping for joy at. Um, well, I like Clara in this episode. <laughs> yeah, actually, your your opinion on Clara's been changing over this series. I this episode because she wasn't Her. awesome McAwesome pants who, you know, uh, she was cold and she was the villain. That's why I like so. But it was the same actress. Like, yeah, same actress. I don't think it's the actress. I don't think it's the characters. I don't think it's Billy Piper. I just despise Rose with a fear and hate. 
Um, but it's also the choice of dialogue. The producer says, yeah, must have missed me. He says, uh, longest month of my life. Mm. Must have been like five minutes. I'll choose the wording for that. Which was very interesting. And I don't know quite why, but that stuck with me a little bit, that choice of words. Because the Doctor generally chooses his words like that with particular notice. Sometimes he'll just say it as a throwaway. But sometimes you've got to th- sometimes you'll look at him and go, well, why has he done that? And a part of me was thinking, what is a month from the series finale? Uh-huh. Because the series finale is on the 5th of December. Mm. Which, coincidentally, is my month's birthday. Um... That'd be fun. Uh, but it's not exactly a month away, but 20 days away is the Christmas special. Mm. Which is making me think that he is preparing himself for it a bit. I don't know. He knows something's going to happen. Oh. He's read the script. <laughs> no, but it's... I really like this episode. I've got no problems with it. I think it's got... <laughs> It's a brilliant message, generally, mm. which I agree with my mum on. Uh, and, and we agreed on as well, saying that needs to be broadcast throughout the interweb. Certain parts um, of the internet. I think YouTube occasionally as well. It's generally anywhere where people can communicate with each other anonymously on the internet. It's pretty much everywhere. I think generally... People just need to... So, the internet, full stop. Uh, no, Blizzard forced you to use your own name. Does it? Yes. No. On the forum, I, they, or they used to, they still do, because of the idea of <laughs> you can't hide behind a face anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I think there's a lot of places that I can do with that still. I mean, I frequent a couple of forums where things. Well, like I still think YouTube's comments that you should read only for the um, comedy value of what they're saying and not take them yes. seriously. Uh, <laughs> that's how I view most forums. So we're actually in agreement on this week's was good. Yeah, I liked it. That is a terrifying gif. Um. If you go on the Twitter, the Doctor Who official Twitter, it's a gif of Clara, evil Clara, just slowly turning their head to the camera. <laughs> but on loop, it's weirdly sinister. Anyway. Well, that, that, that the, a slow motion turn is always sinister, yeah, particularly when... Not that just... slow, it's just the head moves. <laughs> it's, just, it's on loop, it's, it's a gif. Shall we talk about next week's? I look forward to next week's. It looks like it's going back to the... Uh, I was going to say... Trapped thought... on the space station. Monster trapped on... Monster... I was going to say monster trapped on... I, I, when I watched it, I thought... Sure, not like next week's then. It's a, it's a classic. You're in a you're in a fixed location. You're trapped, and there's a monster. Yeah. And it's Mark Gatiss, the master yeah, of is, horror. Yeah, yeah, it should be good because he's a good. And not and, Sparta. <laughs> and it's Reece Shearsmith as well, who yeah. is a very talented actor and writer, and a, and a good friend of Mark Gatiss, and also a personal friend of Peter Capaldi as well, actually. Because mm-hmm. um, he was saying about briefly that he's. He's met with Peter a few times socially. He's not really worked with him. He's never met uh, Jenna Coleman before, but how they were really nice and really lovely and really friendly on set. Mm. Which is very nice to hear. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week. So it, it's going, like you said, it's, that, it's the classic horror trapped in a fixed location, lights out, and it's dealing with sleep as well. So it's literally the idea of dreams and nightmares and that kind of thing. Which makes me feel that if they pushed it back a few weeks ago, that one would have aired on uh, Halloween. Mm. The Zygon Invasion actually aired on Halloween. Yeah. So if we started two weeks earlier. Oh, no. Nevertheless. BBC scheduling. Well, actually, that's something that's been coming out in the news a bit more. BBC uh, scheduling. Yeah. Pete, uh, Peter said in an interview that he thinks the Doctor Who's on too late. Well, Strictly's on, isn't it? Yeah, Strictly's on, but it's the, uh, he's, it's the whole thing of... At the moment, Doctor Who is being used as a pawn by the BBC. And it's just a thing they're moving around. And I understand that we know we can't be put on earlier because of Strictly. But in theory, it's why don't you move Strictly earlier? Uh, rugby was on earlier today, um, I believe. Yes. Um, there are certain I, things that I can control. see his point, though. Cause Doctor yeah, I understand what you're is... saying. That it's, being, it's never a set time anymore. It's, no, it's, it's not. It's back to court past eight next week. Yeah, it's back to court. It's because... It's be- uh, which annoys me because we've said that we've said we I think I don't know if it was during my moment of crisis but we've talked about the idea of <laughs> image of you just you remember that going distinct... to a confessional shit like a TARDIS and just having a one on one with I don't know someone 
You know, as someone mentioned Doctor Who, who can be a priest, a Catholic priest, and be, oh, forgive me, Father, for I have... My, 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 my faith has been shaken, and I need reassurance. That's not... You only go to a confession for that. Well, I don't think of a... You go to uh, a... You go to a priest. You're a priest for something. Your faith has been shaken. Um, but no, but we've spoken about... We've spoken before about how we think that Doctor Who's lack of fixed scheduling is somewhat hurting its ratings. Without having a fixed time to I mean, it. I actually looked at the ratings of the series. The, the ratings have fallen, this series. I guarantee I um, but again, that's, that's before they put in the reruns and the iPlayer accounts and all that oh, kind of yeah, stuff, which would, would boost it. But it's, they've fallen. But he's right. Doctor Who is on a lot later now than it usually is. And mm. it's not built around the 8 o'clock time. It's built around 7 o'clock, just after, just after tea. Magician's Apprentice was 4.5. Which 4. is actually one of the smart... Which is actually... Oh, it's got... A, a, in terms of viewers... Zygon Invasion... Oh, that's funny. Goes from 4.58 million. Which one are you looking at? I'm just going on the first link on Google. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the wiki one. Because uh, I'm wiki for Magician's well, Apprentice. 6.54 is the final number. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the same figures for you then. Yeah, 6.54 yeah. million. It goes to 5 point something. It's, it goes down. goes up for Maisie Williams, which obviously will because... It's Maisie it. Williams. Yeah. And then and then goes up again for you and then goes back... I haven't got the final figures yet for Zygon Invasion. No, Zygon Invasion hasn't been... They haven't got no, about 3.87 million overnight compared to Women Who Lived who had 4.34 million overnight with yeah. 6.11 million final. It's it's dropped. I don't know what last series is were, though. In comparison uh, to the last series, uh, how, since 2005, the one will go up and down all over the place. Looking back at last year's... Opening for, opening for Deep Breath was 9.17 million. Uh, it tends to be in the high. It tends to be in the seven millions to a high six millions. Sometimes they're quite high. It's dropped quite considerably, actually. It's dropped. It's lost about a million people. Wasn't it up against something on TV on the first, the first episode? What Magician's Apprentice? Yeah, or something else was on somewhere. The rugby, wasn't it? Oh, rugby! Yeah, I swore that will. That's like, but the, the series been yeah it's down in numbers. down. It's dropped. But they, but um, Moffat has also said we've got we've got we've seen the, the Doctor Who is set to go until at least twenty twenty <laughs> until the BBC stops funding. Well, he said I've seen the budget. They're not going to cancel it. Well, they're not going to cancel it. They will no. literally ring it out until as until long as, as long as they can. Um, yeah, again, we've had this conversation as well. They'll they'll do it as long as it gets to a point where they are right. We need to do something or else it's all going to go tits up. And so they're bringing someone with some new ideas, which will be, which will work, and we'll get that sudden boy back. Mm. We'll get that nice lift again. Um, oh, and we were talking uh, before we started recording because we actually ended up chatting quite a bit before we started recording this week's review. Uh, we were talking about how it's not all two parts of this series; it's only ten out of the twelve. Thank God. Because Mark Gatiss does not get a two-parter. Because the next one, after that... which one is One person who could use a two-parter, they don't give it to him. Uh, we thought it was a two-parter, because it's Face the Raven and Sleep No More. And Sleep No More they was... They sound less- similar, even. They sound similar, and they've got the same direction. The next one's about sleep, if I remember watching the trailer. Or lack thereof. Uh, here we are, because... Uh, Face the Raven, the synopsis is... Because we know he appeared back in this... In this episode, the Doctor and Clara, with their old friend Riggsy, find themselves in a secret alien world, folded away among the streets of London. Not all of them will get out alive. And Riggsy was the character from Flatline. Mm. Who's Wasn't returning. that square in London from Flatline? Are those all squares in London the same in this episode when Clara was following mm-hmm. that guy? Because Flat- I swear I've seen that place in London before. <laughs> that was that line was set in Bristol, actually. Oh, all the same... They- this is filmed in Wales, anyway. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know it's all, they, they use the same filming location. Yeah. Yeah, so like, I was sitting there when, you, when she was following that guy through, and I've seen this before. I swear. Yeah, it would have been, because we know they use the same sets. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, the flats where Clara lives, Yeah, it's the same building that they, that Rose used to live in. They just filmed from mm. a different angle and with slightly different lighting. And I think it's got a different paint job on it as well since then, because obviously we've moved forward about 10 years. Uh, also, 
we have the return of another character who's going to be in this one. Maisie Williams is back in this one. Is she? Yes. They did announce that she would she would be returning at some point, so she's back in this episode, which is interesting. I'm not sure how or why or what capacity. I know very ratings, little again. Ratings need to go up. <clears throat> to be fair, it's very difficult to do it right. We need ratings to go up. We need to reshoot the entire episode. <laughs> With inserting a character. If you do just put someone famous in it and you'll be surprised. Yeah, I understand that, but you usually do that for like one that's. It's difficult for them. They didn't know that. Wait, the next one, uh, who knows, we'll find out next week. Oh. And Heaven Sent, of course, is a completely. Is, is completely brand new because it's the first episode of Doctor Who to feature only the Doctor. Oh, yeah. No, I that's the one with no companions, no guest directors, no guest actors, and it's just. Peter Capaldi going nuts on the set. Play yeah, the, playing the guitar yeah. for 50 minutes. Please, no. It's going to be an epic fucking photo, man. It, I love him. He's a very good guitar player. I'm not criticising that. I am criticising the idea of, I'm getting a bit you get it. tired. Mm-hmm. It's not a criticism of him. It's a, critici- it's a criticising of how much they're using it. Guitars are popular. No, they are. But I don't care. <laughs> My violins are better. Well, that's just oh. my opinion. I know that violins are better. I think they're different. Hey, they're very different skills. Only too. a true master can rock out on the violin. Anyone can rock out on the guitar. I'm willing to bet that the Doctor <laughs> could probably do it. Yeah, but he's basically walking plot device at this point. I can do anything. It's blight's demand. To be fair, the Doctor can do anything, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but that's the way he is. But he does it without being a Mary Sue, which is quite nice. Gary Stewart really determines for males. Oh, they're gay, it's you. Well, you know, sexism and shit. You know, can't have the same term for two people, for two different genders. The internet just can't have that. And um, aren't actors referred to? Aren't female actress? Aren't act- isn't the term actor used now in terms of male and female? Depends who you ask. As well as both actor and actress. Yeah. Both are, both <laughs> are technically both are technically correct. Yeah. Before. Anyway, before we get into a debate on uh, gender politics. I think we'll actually end... Not equality, gender politics. They are two very different things. And, uh, yeah, very different things. And, um... We're not getting... No, I'm not getting dragged into <laughs> Come on, I want this now. So tempted to, but no, we're not going to get too into that discussion. Who. Not on Doctor Who. Not related to Doctor Who. We can do a separate video for that. Um, if you do... Incidentally, if you do want us to do... Have a... <laughs> the uh, most inter- controversial video ever. Cause... If you do want us to have a discussion and, uh... Which might lead into, therefore, a debate on gender and politics. An argument in a politics. fight. <laughs> do, do feel free to comment to let us. I don't know, know where we stand. This is like how much we would argue. Because so. uh, otherwise, we'll just leave that for conversations we have in private that you won't get to listen to. Which is all the shame for you, really, because our arguments do get pretty weird. We go off on tangents even then. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to argue about macaroni and cheese. How did we even get here? I have no idea. No, we're talking about teenage mutant ninja turtles at one point. Um, it would make sense for that, but macaroni and cheese doesn't. <laughs> at some point, we'll get there. We now we have to have one where we'd go through those as talking. But right, <laughs> <laughs> it's way too late. For this. It's too late for this. <laughs> on, on that note, um, on that note, uh, we will end our review for the Zygon inversion, which we both agreed was good. And you can join us next week for our review of Sleep No More. No more! Quote the raven. Not never more. Fuck! No, no, face the raven is the next one. Quote the raven, the rest never more. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Reference fail. Um. Anyway, join us then.